putting together a short video at the end of Q1, I want to cover a couple of topics. Uh, I wrote recently in my Lithium Bull, The Sleeping Giant Awakes, issue 69.420, in an homage to Tesla. Welcome back to Rockstock Channel, and thanks for checking in. We'd like to thank all our Patreon sponsors, and for those of you who are new, share a bit about us. RK Equity is an advisory firm run by Rodney Hooper and me, Howard Klein. We are exclusively focused on raising awareness about companies producing or developing the next generation critical raw materials that are powering Tesla's EV battery energy transition. Please register your email at rkequity.com and follow Rodney and me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please also subscribe to this channel, Rockstock Channel on YouTube, as well as Lithium Ion Rocks on SoundCloud for our podcasts. Please note, Rodney and me are not financial advisors or broker dealers. Nothing you hear in this video is investment advice. Please do your own research and read the disclaimer at the end of this video or on our website. Thanks again for the support and let's get into the video. The Sleeping Giant Awakes is Joe Biden and the American Infrastructure Plan called the, I guess, the American Jobs Act. $2.3 trillion uh, is the plan. To talk about that Biden plan, I would recommend you're listening to uh, Dave on Investing, who interviewed Gary Black, where the talk is of maybe $10,000 up from 7,500 EV subsidies, potentially uncapped. Uh, right now, there's a cap of 200,000 cars per uh, automakers. So Tesla and GM have already hit those numbers. The Biden administration is very much focused on bringing the U.S. in line with China and Europe catching up uh, with in the EV market. And on CNBC this week, there were two long uh, interviews, one focused on battery shortages and overall like within the supply chain and another on uh, recycling. We've also had some chip shortages. In the battery space, there was also LG Chem and SK Innovation, uh, the major case that uh, could have thwarted one of the biggest battery uh, projects in America, in Georgia, which is SK Innovations. But in the 11th hour, they settled for $1.8 billion. Uh, SK Innovation is going to pay in cash and future royalties to LG Chem. The Biden administration is very focused on catching up and uh, the battery gigafactories, which are disproportionately in China and Europe and America is a bit lagging. I think over the next number of years, you're going to see us catch up. The first quarter saw an enormous number of SPACs coming to market. More SPACs came to market in the first quarter than came public all of last year. And all of last year, more SPACs, there was more than twice as much SPAC money raised than in the prior seven years combined. So there's now some 400 SPACs looking for deals. And inevitably, uh, that's too much money chasing too few opportunities. Lower quality opportunities are going to come to market. Some of these SPACs are now trading at or below the $10 mark, which is the money that they have backed in escrow. Companies have actually consummated transactions. They, they could go well below $10 and some of that is starting to happen. But SPACs, which have announced mergers or haven't yet announced mergers, they're trading um, you know, you know, at or near you know, the $10 mark, which in my opinion offers some potential asymmetric risk reward in that the downside is only $10 until a SPAC is actually consummated. You know, there's an opportunity for the SPAC market to recover, which I think it might. The headwind for March was largely rising interest rates, and last week they seem to have stabilized. We'll see if uh, that continues. But some are calling this this dip in the tech market, in the SPAC market, um, you know, a great opportunity to buy. Uh, I'm going to talk about a number of companies which I own, you know, or were advisors to in this video. As always, nothing uh, here is financial advice. The fact that I own Ivanhoe Capital Corp, run by uh, an old friend of mine, Robert Friedland, and former client of mine. That has 22 months. That hasn't announced anything, but, you know, if you could buy something at the $10 that's backed, you know, the, the cash backing with a proven entrepreneur like Robert Friedland, you know, the probability between now and 22 months from now that he announces a deal that the market's going to like, I think is a high probability. And you could potentially just sell into that announcement or you can stay on, you know, through, you know, SPAC merger consummation. One SPAC that I've mentioned 
before that has announced the deal, but it hasn't yet been consummated in the battery space is Alusa, which is merging with a European company called Frere. I mentioned this in the Real Vision interview. That's now trading, you know, at 10 or 10 dollars, 10 cents. It's an $850 million SPAC of which 600 million plus is being put in through a private placement backed by Glencore, um, Coke Strategic um, Ventures. These are two major, uh, you know, strategic investors in this space, in addition to several traditional mutual funds. Moving on to the battery materials scoreboard, uh, you actually had MP Materials and Piedmont both raised significant sums of money. Uh, MP Materials did a convertible. Piedmont raised $123 million at around a $1 billion valuation. That's the concept of U.S. listings, picks and shovels, I've talked about this a number of times. So MP, Lithium Americas, Piedmont, Pure Plays, listed, fully listed on the, the U.S. exchanges, and they have much higher liquidity than any of the other names that are on my scoreboard, which are listed in Australia and Toronto. So if a company is going to list in the United States, I believe there's a catalyst for those companies. And one example of that is, is actually, I never talked about this vanadium story, Largo, they announced uh, their TSX listed that they're going to come to list on NASDAQ sometime this year. In order to do that, you often have to do a consolidation of the share. In Largo's case, I think they did a 10 for one. And what often happens is the stock will trade off uh, after that news, but before it actually lists. So that did happen in Largo and, and the stock, um, you know, spiked on Friday. I'm not sure why, but, uh, Another company that announced their intention to do this and also did a consolidation is Nuvomo and Graphite. So their stock is, you know, they did a reverse split from $1.90. The stock was then $19. It's traded down to, to 16 But th that's a story we, we follow our advisors to, uh, but very much are looking to follow in kind of the Piedmont footsteps, MP Materials coming to the U.S., Talon Metals is another one, and Nickel, um, they announced that they're examining doing that. They haven't actually done a reverse split, so I'm not uh, sure ultimately what, um, you know, when and if that's going to happen. But it's just on my radar, companies like this that might list in the U.S., and there's a number in the lithium space, I think, that are thinking about doing it as well. If I turn quickly just to the nickel scoreboard, almost all of the markets are traded off a bit. So nickel fell not so much due to rising interest rates, but because of news out of China from Qingshan. Question this, you know, dirty nickel versus clean nickel. But nevertheless, the nickel price fell. The only stock on our scoreboard among the developers that did not fall was actually Talon Metals. And I'm speculating a reason for that is because Talon Metals, unlike many of the other companies on the scoreboard, can be profitable at current nickel prices, whereas many of the other companies on the scoreboard require nickel prices to rise significantly for them to become economic. In the lithium space, there are a couple of uh, company, other companies that raise money beyond Piedmont. One is uh, Frontier Lithium, raised, I think, 7 or $8 million. Uh, it's a story that we... We like in Ontario, part of what we call the North American Hard Rock Lithium Triangle. Uh, Jindalee, out of nowhere, a company I haven't talked about really ever, announced um, a $9 million raise and then just last week announced a resource, which uh, they're suggesting makes them the biggest resource in America. It's a clay story, you know, similar to Lithium Americas, but they're arguing they now have a bigger resource than, than Lithium Americas, albeit they're using a, uh, a lower cutoff grade. So finally, I just uh, going to keep this short, but uh, I've been, um, you know, we're in addition to our channel we're we're frequently interviewed Rodney and I in other locations. So I recently did an interview on clean technical with Zach Shahan, which covers a lot of the uh, American politics and policy, um, you know, commentary on what I think might happen in particular from the Department of Energy. We also co-sponsored at Mines and Money with a lithium panel, which included, you know, E3 metals, critical elements, uh, and European metals holdings. And then we did a non-lithium panel, titanium, Tau Commodities, founder of Piedmont Lithium, Tazo Arima. And uh, we also interviewed uh, on, you know, on that panel as well was uh, Nouveau Monde and Talon Metals. So with that, I just wanted to kind of give that update, flag the lithium ion bull and some of the topics I covered, you know, in the first quarter. And uh, from time to time, maybe monthly or quarterly, we'll uh, go through these scoreboards and quick summaries once again. Thanks a lot. Until next time.